Welcome back everyone, Mariah Monetize here. In today's video, we're gonna be going over some cryptocurrency news. We're also gonna be going over a major announcement and how a bunch of countries and institutions are getting together to talk about Bitcoin with the El, uh, El Salvador president, which is massive, massive news. It's just showing us that we are getting so much closer to um, major adoption. And then I'm gonna be going over the price of Bitcoin and kind of giving you a strategy of what I'm looking for with selling off some coins in the near future and which coins I am going to be selling off. So if you wanna follow me on Twitter, um, Mariah Vittoria 9, a few things here. So 44 nations are meeting with El Salvador to discuss Bitcoin tomorrow. And then shortly after this, I think I saw 11 more were added. Um, so 1800 Bitcoin ATMs will be deployed in quick trip convenience stores across the US. I've actually never purchased Bitcoin from an ATM. I know the fees have typically been crazy in the past and that's why I haven't done it. Um, but that could have changed over the years. That was like three years ago. But at the end of the day, it just is creating more awareness for Bitcoin. Um, China's economy shrank sharply. So a lot of people look at, at China as a superpower. I think China is slowly headed in the wrong direction. So. Industrial production dropped 2.9%. Retail sales plunged 11.1%. Greater China makes up for 20% of Apple's revenue, which is a pretty big chunk. And Apple makes up 7% of the S&P. So Matt here thinks that that is uh, one step closer to a global recession. So the Luna Foundation has disclosed they sold 80,082 of its Bitcoin reserves for UST between May 8th and May 10th. I think um, the Luna Foundation currently only has about 300 Bitcoin um, in their reserves. So crypto lending platform Celsius Network has a mining subsidiary, Celsius Mining, and you soon might see it traded on a stock exchange. That's some positive news coming in there. Uh, Binance reveals their 15 million Luna tokens uh, are now worth, or that were once worth 1.6 billion at all time high, are now worth three thousand dollars wow okay uh billionaire british hedge fund manager alan howard is building an institutional crypto trading platform barclays and goldman sachs have joined a 70 million series a funding round for the platform more adoption obviously so this was really like more negative news coming out on the day is that portugal confirms the country will begin taxing bitcoin and cryptocurrency so in my opinion this is a massive mistake with Portugal's current setup of tax-free Bitcoin, it was creating um, a ton of good press for Portugal. A lot of people were moving to Portugal. Portugal has also a, a lot of other great tax incentives. So come to find out they had not like a specific bill or anything that made um, Bitcoin untaxed. It was kind of just something that went unsaid in a sense is what I got from this particular article. So. What's gonna end up happening? I think other countries countries are gonna be like, wow, what an awesome opportunity. Uh, Portugal is not going to advertise themselves as a country that has 0% capital gains on cryptocurrency gains. And so I think a lot of other countries are gonna step in and kind of take that particular spotlight. So like, even if you're someone that is from the States, moving to Portugal really wouldn't make a difference for you. You're still gonna owe taxes to the USA. And the only way to kind of get around that is by renouncing your citizenship. Um, so there is, there is no specific law. It's just a lack of regulation that led to the zero taxation in Portugal, said Duarte. This together with an understanding published by the Portuguese tax authority in 2016 meant that only crypto related businesses can be taxed. So interesting to see how that goes. Um, once everything kind of plays out there and the current capital gains tax rate for financial investments in Portugal is 28%. So another positive thing here, Grayscale announced its first European ETF listing on the London Stock Exchange. Um, and then I told you about the 44 countries meeting together um, in El Salvador. So um, the president announced 11 more financial authorities will discuss Bitcoin in El Salvador today. So a lot of positive news there. So uh, over to the price of Bitcoin. Um, I personally believe that the bottom is not in and that we are going to see um, more room to the downside. And it could be next week and it could be in 18 months. 
Um, but when you kind of just look at the world in general, Bitcoin's job obviously was to be recession proof or be the hate, you know, the, the place that you want to store your wealth when there is a recession. And Bitcoin has proved to not quite achieve that. But what we can say is that Bitcoin has actually done better than some stocks. So for example, Shopify down, like I was talking to my friend yesterday, like 82%. So Bitcoin is actually not that far down. So in some cases, Bitcoin has been a better place to store your wealth than particular stocks. So that is one perspective to see here. So this right here is the weekly chart, which, um, you know, obviously we still need a lot to happen on the weekly chart for there, for there to be a big momentum shift on Bitcoin. Um, this right here is a daily chart, which is looking decent. So the high of yesterday's candle, 31,418, um, the high of today's candle, 31,293. So we have pulled back a little bit since then, but if we could get um, this green two going above the green one, that would be positive. And if we could see potentially this moving average heading in that direction, um, that's what I would be considering getting in in a more substantial position with Bitcoin is that if we see that crossover on this five and that 12 moving average, this is the 12 hour chart here, um, which is doing okay. I mean, it looks better than it has previously. You've seen a little bit of a bump obviously off the bottom, but still a lot needs to play out in order for there to be, in my opinion, a massive momentum shift. This is a four hour chart, which actually looks decent. So I'd like to see Bitcoin hold this low, 28,564. And I think if it can hold that, it could do well. I actually, okay, so this is kind of my game plan. I'm gonna kind of back up, take a look at exactly everything that I have and consider getting rid of altcoins Preserving my Bitcoin and Ethereum, but obviously gonna first look at getting rid of most of my altcoins. Um, and then taking into consideration Ethereum, um, and then obviously Bitcoin last. So I am considering moving more in that direction. Um, and it's not that I'm gonna be selling altcoins and getting Bitcoin immediately, I'm going to be waiting. So I'm gonna be looking in more depth at the charts that I have, or at the charts for the altcoins that I have to find good exit positions. So it's not like I'm gonna go in and sell all at once. I think that we might see a little bit more of a bump in the price before a major pullback. And I would obviously uh, prefer to sell um, in that scenario. This is an hourly chart, which was looking decent here off of the 14th. Um, over about a day, a day and a half. And then obviously we've seen um, it turn around a bit. This is the 30 minute chart, which is also not looking too good. So Ethereum sitting at just over $2,000. We have BNB just sitting under $300. The Coinbase stock has uh, jumped a bit to $65. And the low came in, wow, $40. I didn't even realize that was a low that came in on May 12th. So $40.84. And um, wow, that was uh, quite a buy if you got it in at 40, then it went up 80%. So um, wow, that was, if you caught that, that was a great return in a very short period of time. We have DOT sitting at $10.61, LINK sitting at $7.38, um, Celsius sitting at $0.83, cents, MANA $1.20, and then we have Luna sitting at 0 0.00016. So um, I typically am not buying things that are a dollar in that range. And so one thing, this was such a rookie mistake. And honestly, I'm slightly um, embarrassed to uh, admit this, but I was thinking that I'm like, the floor for Luna is probably potentially going to be a penny. And then you realize that it could still drop 90% from a penny. And um, it kind of just put things into perspective. I mean, I haven't messed with coins that are that cheap in a really, really long time. I think I, I took a big gamble on Luna. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw like $700 at it. Yeah, that was definitely not my best choice, but I'm glad it was a small amount. So for example, yeah, like even though Luna was sitting you know, at those ranges, it was still able to pull back like 100%. So 
Uh, UST sitting at seven cents. It has dropped 50% today. Okay, traditional markets, last time I looked, um, they, they opened a little bit down and they made a little bit of a turnaround. So let's just take a look at the five minute chart here on SPY. So the opening came in, today's the 16th. Let's see here, 16th. So yeah, we opened up down a little bit and then kind of just kept bumping up and down. And then um, we are higher at this particular moment than we were at the opening. And so across the board, things are up a little bit. We still see some things down. Amazon is down a little bit today. Tesla is down um, over 5% today. And then um, just a little bit of mixed feelings across the electric vehicle space when it comes to, you know, not, not everything's red, not everything's green. We have a little bit of both. So that's kind of what my game plan is, particularly. Um, what tends to happen in the cryptocurrency space is that you experience multiple market cycles. And what I've learned personally, and I see this play out with a lot of other people, is that your portfolio goes from being pretty darn heavy with altcoins and then over time, Bitcoin starts gaining a larger and larger and larger percentage of your total portfolio. And this is already like my second market cycle. And as you can see, like I didn't quite learn the first time. And there's something about when people enter the cryptocurrency space, they're all about the altcoins. They ignore Bitcoin. They think it's too expensive. Um, they start getting married to these other projects. And then over time quickly realize, okay, it's Bitcoin. Because we're all in this space for a few reasons and it's set supply, which a lot of altcoins do not have a set supply. And it's for being decentralized. And the most, there's actually, in my opinion, zero altcoins um, that are decentralized, okay? Well, not zero, I mean, I don't know about all, what, 10, 15, 20, there has been, this interesting period of time for me where people are always asking me about altcoins and I'm like, I'm not taking the time to learn about these other projects. Um, and I'm glad that I haven't wasted time doing that because at the end of the day, at, after every day that goes by, after more market cycles that you experience, you'll be probably one step closer to being a Bitcoin maximalist. And that's just how it is. Do I think other projects are going to survive and do well? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, I mostly just focus on Bitcoin. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. That's all that I have for you. As always, go out there and create a portfolio that you love.